Hey, what's up guys? It's Sunday and it's another kit build. Today, for your kit building and viewing pleasure, we have the Geek Crate 300276-0728-8335. This is an FM radio kit. And I'm really excited about this one because I think it's going to be fun to put together. So it's got some nice looking components here. I'm going to get them out and uh, we'll get started building this. Let's go take a look at this on Banggood's webpage. Alright, here's the radio on Banggood's website. It is the Geekrite DIY 3 volt FM radio kit electronic learning suite frequency range. 72 megahertz to 108.6 megahertz and as you can see it is eight dollars 79 cents american or seven pounds two if you're in britain and yeah this is just how this kit comes except this is black but you just get a whole bunch of parts there so I'll post the link down below. All right, guys, we're going handheld here for a minute. I apologize. I just want to show you that all of the components came in nothing but a bag. So I rooted them all out separated them into groups and measured the value of all the resistors so now we are ready to build uh, so here's what we get a uh, nice half block diagram half schematic here showing us all the different sections of the radio a picture of the PCB backside and PCB front side and a list of components and values so all good stuff and I will definitely be referring to it all right let's get started building all right so I'd like to get started with the smallest components first so we will start out with the resistors and we'll get them in probably do all of the um, different values at the same time They're all in place. I'll just bend their leads a little to keep them there. And we'll get them soldered in. And no, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me do the whole thing. All right, I've soldered in all the resistors I can find a spot for on the board, but I still have six resistors left. I am very confused. I mean, here's the other board, and there's no spot for any resistors there. So, I guess we will carry on and see what happens. Next up, capacitors. 
All right, we're on to capacitors. We're going to go with the ceramic capacitors first. You can see them uh, here with this marking on the board. And like this says, 104, C17, C630, and so on and so on. So we'll get started putting some of those in. There's a 104. Mm -hmm. 202. 472. Another one of four. And a thirty. I'm gonna solder those in and then we'll move on to the next batch. Alright, the first batch went in without any trouble, although I did miss one joint and I had to go back always good to double check. A uh, rule of thumb I learned about 20 years ago when I got my pilot's license was the number of landings should always equal the number of takeoffs. So keep that in mind with your soldering also. Count the joints when you're soldering. You should always have an even number. any of you guys are pilots as well I am certified PPASEL IA all right get these little guys soldered in here and we'll be back all right all the ceramics are in and as you can see here, I have a number of leftovers again. I don't know what's up. But we will find out at the end. All right, let us move on to the electrolytic caps. All right, the first one I got here, I'm going to need a magnifying glass for. And then I still can't read it. You guys see what that says? All right, we'll come back to that one later, move on to a bigger one. That looks like it says 70, uh, 470 microfarad. So, four, seven, there's a 470. Remember, our electrolytics are polarized. This white stripe is the negative side. Another 470 down here. And our final 470 right here. which means this one must be a 10. And it goes right here. Like I said, with these extras, we'll find out at the end of the build if there are any unpopulated vias in which case 
Well, no, something was supposed to be there, right? Yes, I'm still using the cheapest Chinese soldering station that I got for $25 off of eBay, and I love it. There we go. Nip these off and we'll be back. Okay, next up are our inductors. There's three of them and there's two types. The small one is a five and a half turn. The large one is a six and a half turn. And they really don't give us any measurements in micro Henry so all right let me wiggle these into the board here all right I'm gonna solder these in individually and then I'll be back all right, we are moving on to our ICs next. And we have two of them, the TDA2822, which is an eight pin dip package and it is a dual amplifier. And this guy here, that is the CD2003GP. And it is the heart of this entire system. It is an integrated FM radio receiver. Ah, the trains are here. I'll be back. Oops. All right, I'm getting ready to solder in our main chip there, that CD2003. But I don't know if you can tell. You know, there's a semicircular notch there, and there's a dot there. Which one is indicating pin 1? We're going to go with the semicircular notch. And if I'm wrong, well then, the whole thing's not going to work. A little bit of the old scotch tape, although you definitely want to be careful with scotch tape and ICs because it can cause a little bit of ESD, which is very bad for your CMOS chips. So we want to be careful we remove that. Okay. So now we can just solder it all up here. These pads are very, very close together. So you want to be extra careful about solder bridges. In fact, when I'm done soldering this, I'm going to go over it with a microscope and make sure that I didn't create any solder bridges. All right, I'll be back after I check it out. Okay, no solder bridges. Our other chip is the TDA2882 which as I said is a uh, dual amplifier chip so we'll put that down next and 
I've made a mistake. I just noticed it. Have any of you guys noticed it? Are you sitting there screaming at your computer? I'll show you what it is in a second. Did you guess it yet? I was supposed to lay those capacitors down. All right, I'm gonna have to figure out something. I'll be back. Okie dokies. All right, next up, we have a switch. Which should be relatively easy. If it wants to stay in, I'm just going to lay it down here. So I bent those capacitors over as far as I could. Hopefully it's enough. If not, well, there could be a problem. Hopefully not though. All right, switches in. All right, next up, headphone jack. Bumble fingers here. That's nice that this radio came with a headphone jack. What's not nice is... Uh, it's really not fitting. Okay, well, we certainly don't have to worry about... don't have to worry about holding that in place while it gets soldered in. That's not going anywhere. So, headphone jack. Not to be confused with the headphone jill. I know, I'm just rambling. I'm trying not to have any dead air. So next we have this 50k pot here. Oh, that went in nicely. Too bad everything can't be that nice, right? I'll be back in a minute. All right, I believe the last component on our board is the tuning capacitor. And it appears to be keyed. You can see there's a small slot there and a larger slot on the other side. So, hopefully, just to come out a little bit and yeah, needs to come out a little bit more there we are now do you want to stay in there nicely and behave yourself good good tuning capacitor
All right, that's interesting. That really didn't want to take any solder. So, we get out of the flux. And a little dab of flux. Hopefully, we'll try and reflow that. Hopefully, a little dab of flux will uh, make things better. We're going to find out, aren't we? All right, let's try again. I'm still not quite happy with that. I really don't like the way that the solder is kind of not really flowing there. don't like that either. Hmm. Well, we'll see what happens, won't we? All right, so working out the final details. This is the uh, display PC board mounted, and hopefully we'll hear the clicks. No click on those two. That's not good. Anyway. This board fits in here like this. Then our main power switch comes through there like such. Very nice. So, a little bit more soldering. Going to start soldering on the speaker terminals. And I have picked blue and white wire from the choices they have given me. There's a piece of white. And here comes some blue. Now, as far as I can tell, there are no mechanical fasteners for the speaker to be held into the case. It looks to me like it's just going to sit in here like that, which is fine. And you can see we have the speaker one and two marked on the board there. All right. Let me figure out a couple more things and we'll be back. All right, one of the things you're going to pick up on real quick when you start building these kits is you're going to have to make a lot of decisions for yourself. For interest, for in instance, there's no markings on the polarity of the battery. So kind of what you got to do 
put the board in there and you can see there is a uh, B plus marking there and a B minus marking there so we know where the battery goes and uh, it means if you mess it up it's not like you can't take it out and fix it somehow it's no real big deal now that's gonna be fun alright you don't want to watch me fight with this alright this is madness trying to get these little clicky damn things on here I tried to do it just by setting them in place but they won't stay so I guess I'm gonna have to solder them in <laughs> wish me luck Uh -uh. Son of a bitch. Alright, so solder, not the way to go. Tape, it's what's for dinner. Good thing they gave me an extra one of those because I launched one of them to near Earth orbit. Alright, let's put the screws back in and hopefully it will click. All the buttons shall click this time. That's my hope anyway. A guy can hope, right? This will be the like fourth time I've taken this particular board in and out, so. The screws are going in much easier. I've made all the other connections. So all we've got to do now is interconnect the two boards and connect speaker, antenna, and batteries. All right, all you damn buttons better click. All right, all buttons clicky. Excellent. All right, I got the interconnect done. That wasn't too hard. Now, for the speaker. Hopefully this will be just as easy. Then again, it probably won't be. Okay, now if everybody will remain perfectly still and quiet, especially those of you laughing at me, there's one.
There's two. Whew, okay. So now, now, now I should desolder the battery wires and solder them onto the PC board first. Yep. That's what I should do. All right, be right back. All right. So the battery wires are now in. The speaker wires are now in. And I believe that we can now mount this. At least that's my hope. Okay, so four corner screws. And in she goes. Will she work? Nobody knows. That's always the fun part, isn't it? That first time you put the power to it, is it going to work? Or is it going to, as they say, south of the border, is it going to explode? I hope it doesn't explode. And the final PCB mounting screw. Dun, da, da, da. So that's it for that. Um, what do we got to do now? You know, we need to do battery wires. Hopefully this one's long enough. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, that was the last of the soldering. I know I'm like, whew, thank God, right? So then we need to put in the antenna. But I think, I think that goes in first and then the antenna goes over top of it and captures it and 
maybe. I think that's how it goes. And then we put in this screw here for the old antenna. And by God, I think that's it. All we gotta do now is put the case together. All right, I'm gonna screw it together. You guys will need to watch that, right? All right, there she is, all assembled and beauty like except for that which came factory fresh so we shall put in some batteries hey look at that we got a clock open up this over here turn her on and Yeah, can't let you listen to more than a couple seconds, you know, or Uncle Google will reach out and bitch slap me a couple times. But there you have it. A real working FM radio that you can build yourself. Thanks, Banggood, and thank you guys for watching. Leave comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. I'll see you guys next time.